welcome back. Now, today we're going to take a break from the painting because A, it's going hard and B, there's no point finishing that until we've got a boiler for it. So, boiler's there. Um, we're just going to give it a quick check, make sure that it's... Um, so do, a, do a hydraulic on it, make sure it's okay. Worst thing would be to put it all back together, do the boiler test and find that it, it needs um, the boiler off. So we're going to take a look at that. But before we take a look at that boiler, I thought we'd take a look at the Jinty boiler as well. Um, remind myself where we were with that and maybe try and get some tests done on it or, or some repair done on that soon as well. Let's take a look. So I've got a couple of bottles of water. Um, that one's a bit easier to pour. That one's got a nice big spout, which as you can see has a caravan pump in it. And I've got a 12 volt supply on the wall. So I could fill the boiler up quite easily. Now, I acquired this pump from somewhere. It's got a nice uh, drain on it as well. So, we can pump it up. I've made a fitting to go on the end. Take the quarter 40, same as our club uses. Now, if I just pump it up to 100. Quite clearly see a problem there. So I have marked three or four stays on this side, one on the other side and a couple on the end. Um, I just need to clean them up a bit more and then tackle them. And at the same time take a look at the tube plate as well. But I can't quite get to the tube plate where she's sat. I'll need to block this end so I can uh, take a look at that. So yes, on the tube plate we've also got a weep. Come on, focus. Up around the joint there. The place where we first suspected that caused all of this doesn't seem to be leaking at the moment, but we will give that a bit of solder anyway. We've got few leaks in the firebox and that is about that. So we've got it pumped up, there's a little bit of pressure in there, we've got some weeps around the dome, this left hand steam valve is leaking quite badly but Pretty much, that's about it. So I need to sort this steam valve out. And I will have a look up inside the fire box as well. So I haven't had it pressurized for very long. I have turned it over and looked inside the fire box and it is all bone dry in there. So my only concerns, I mean, there's water here, but that's run down from where I filled it up, I believe. So my only concerns are the dome bush, um, the gasket, and the steam valve on this left hand side. Other than that, I would hazard a guess that the boiler is sound. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, the Jinty boiler, obviously, I knew needed some work, so we'll start work on that in a minute. Ooh, a minute from your perspective but at some point for me uh, and the pom-pom boiler I didn't suspect there was a problem but it was just worth checking I have given it a once over and like I say just a couple of little bits to sort so let's crack on obviously it may seem like, but like a bit of toing and froing but like I said earlier the last thing I'd want to do is 
finish putting the engine together and then find that there was something wrong with the boiler. Or wait until I was ready to put the boiler on and then find there was a problem with it. And that would delay me when I could be doing both at the same time. So, thank God that's fine. So we're now just onto the engine. I say now we're just onto the engine. I will look at that, clap, that uh, steam valve first. So, let's see what, empty the boiler first and then see what we're looking at. So I've just drained all the water out and it's occurred to me, I should have left it full so that when I've sorted this valve out, I can try it again. But never mind, I will take it apart, take a look at it, put it back together, then fill it back up again. So this is what's come out. The spindle has a countersink in the end and pushes on that ball. Now, that's not necessarily the ideal from my point of view. However, that's what's there. Uh, so obviously the ball isn't seating inside the fitting. Here is the fitting. Quite easy to show you. But, yeah, whatever's going on in there, it's not seating. So I've got a couple of options. Either find another ball, put it in the hole, give it a bit of a tap. Or what I think I'm going to try and play around with. Who knows? I need to see if I've got any first. Uh, find a bit of bar, turn it to a radius. I've got a ball turning attachment. I can turn it to the same diameter as a ball. And either tap that on or with some grinding paste, just very fine, just grind the, the valve seat. So I might give that a go. So I've had a hunt and I've found some grinding paste, which then I suppose leads me on to talking about my ball turning attachment on the lathe. Um, got it set up. Um, let's take a look and see what it does. So as you can see, we are set up, there's a couple of bearings in there. You set it to the radius you want and a tip. Uh, so you set it to there, touch it on the outside and just turn the radius on the end. Now hopefully it will be about right. I've put my own rudimentary scale on there. I know it's a bit rough, I did it a long time ago in a hurry at work, but it's there. So I'll try and, I've already machined that to the same diameter as the ball. Uh, we'll put a little radius on and see how it works. So we're set up in the lathe, we've already turned the end to the right diameter. We are going to set this up so that it just touches. When it touches with it running, I'll then start machining the ball and you'll see how it works. Luckily with the collet chuck, this passes underneath, whereas, see it has to clear underneath. Whereas with the uh, three jaw, this would have to stick out a long way. So. So there we have a nice ball on the end of a rod which we can use with grinding paste to just clean up the seat in that valve ready for the ball to sit on. So I have put my rod 
with the ball on the end of a drill. Started cleaning up the hole. Let's see. Looks not too bad, but the bottom there's a little bit of a bad spot. So I'll keep going. So there we have it. I've given it a good clean up. Uh, the seat looks pretty good. Just need to clear up all the grinding paste off of it. And for that, I've stolen a pipe cleaner from the kids' arts and crafts box. So let's give that a try. And it seems to be working perfectly. Got a bit of a drip on the blow down valve. Other than that, this is not too bad. Yeah, let's see if I can sort that out a bit better. So when I make my blowdown valves, and I made the one for this engine, um, I tend to use a little M6 grub screw because then I've got a nice hexagon in the back which I can uh, put an allen key in. And they go quite neat. So what I've done now, to try and help it centralise, because it may have been that it wasn't sitting central, I've Put the put a die in the die stock, tightened it up quite a bit, a little bit at a time, and forced the uh, grub screw through to make a looser thread. So hopefully, if that seat wasn't quite in the middle, it can now centralise as you tighten it up. So there we go, holding pressure. Nothing from the steam valves, or clacks, or blowdown valve, but we are getting a bit of a hiss from the dome, but we can sort that out later. So there we have it. Um, the pom-pom boiler is ready to go back on the engine. Uh, all the leaks are sorted, except for the dome, but that's probably going to be easier when it's on the engine. Uh, there's nothing, no reason why the dome isn't accessible and easy to sort in situ. Probably easier than on the bench, to be fair. And Ginty, I've got some work to do there. But I know where the leaks are, I've marked them out. I'm able to give it a bit more of a clean around those particular stays if necessary flux it, heat it. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have a go at that down at the club. Um, but I need to get everything off of it first. Um, get the regulator out and, and everything. So yeah, that's that's sort of where we are at the moment, boiler-wise. Um, so next time we'll be looking at uh, starting to, potentially starting to look towards getting the uh, boiler back on the frames that might want a bit of lining doing to the engine first so I'll, I'll concentrate on the lining get the lining done then look at getting the boiler on so that's what's to come next time so thanks for watching uh, thanks for taking the time out it's always amazing to know that you're interested so I will catch up with you soon Take care and hopefully uh, I've inspired some to, to get out and do something in the workshop. So for now, goodbye.